Welcome to my 8th video on reinforced concrete design based on Eurocode 2. Today we will look conclusively on the design value of action. We are still using the same textbook. The new topic is design value of action. This is also the conclusion of chapter 2 on the limit state design of the book. Let's recap of what we have learned so far. All actions or loading on the structure must be multiplied with partial factor of safety to make them bigger. The purpose is to overestimate the problem. However, when there are more than one variable actions taking place on the, at the same time, then we multiply the, accom uh, the, uh, the accompanying variable action with a factor size that is lesser than one. This is effectively creating a discount on the action. Why do we want to do that? The answer is the probability for all these variable actions to come together to create the worst possible scenario is extremely small. As a result, we can put a discount factor like psi, which, have, which we have gone through in the previous video. In this video, I'm going to use both of these to assemble a complete design value. Here you are. The mathematical representation of the components that make up the design value of action at ultimate limit state. On the left hand side, we have the design value ED. The first term on the right hand side is the total permanent action. I will explain the details later. Next, we have the leading variable action. And finally, the accompanying variable actions. Next, I want to explain the plus sign. The plus signs here means combination, not addition. What's the difference? Not all the actions are in the same direction. These, those in opposite dire direction can offset each other. If they are if they act at an angle, then we combine them vectorially, likewise for the summation sign. They also means combination. Okay, let's go through the term, go through the equation term by term. The first term on the right represents all the permanent actions. The two straight lines, vertical line means we take only the positive value of the results. The letter J refers to the number of components that contribute to the permanent action. So if there are 100 components, then J starts from 1, goes on to 2, 3, 4, all the way to 100. We are basically combining the actions of component 1, 2, 3, all the, and all the way to the maximum. Next, we have gamma GJ which means partial factor of safety for component J. And finally, we have the value of actions for each component represented by G, K, J. Together, they form the entire permanent action. The second term is the leading variable action. If you only have one variable action, then put it there. If you have more than one, Choose the biggest one and put it here. There are two factors in this term. Gamma Q1 is the partial factor of safety, while QK1 is the action itself. For the last term, it is for the accompanying variable action. If you have only one variable action, then this term is zero. If you have more than one, then this is what is left after we have taken out the biggest one for the leading variable action. Like the first term, the two vertical lines means we only take the positive value. The letter I refers to the number of actions. Since you have taken up one of the variable actions to be the leading variable action in the second term, we are left with I starting from number 2 to the total number. Gamma is the partial factor of safety. Psi is a discount factor we learned in the previous video due to combination effects. Q1 
is the value of action. At this point, I've explained through every building block in this equation. This table captures a summary of the equation I've explained just now. It comes directly from the book. Note that the word variable here means life load. This table is limited to only life and wind load, which is common in most situations. If you have another variable action, then this table is useless. You have to use the previous equation. The words at the bottom refer to, some, to something called table 2.4. This is the table of size which I've shown you to you in the previous lecture, uh, uh, previous video. Overall, this table is useful, useful in most conditions involving permanent life and wind load. Now let's go through the design load at serviceability limit state. If you can recall, ultimate limit state is the part where we check against the structure collapsing, overturning, and crushing under the worst case scenario. At serviceability limit state, we are not interested in that. Here, we are checking whether the structure will still look good and able to fulfill its function under normal working conditions. Like the ultimate limit state, We also have three different types of actions acting together. Combinations value, frequent values, and quasi-permanent values. The definition of these actions and the values of psi, not, one, and two are exactly the same as before. Let's go through each of them in detail. Let's start with the combination values at serviceability limit state. It looks exactly the same as the equation for the ultimate limit state except for the absence of gamma. There is no factor of safety here. For frequent values of variable ver actions, same as the one before except for two changes. One, the multipl multiplication of psi 1, comma 1 at the second term. And at the third term, instead of psi not comma i, we replace it with psi 2 comma i. With these two changes, we can expect the design load to be smaller than the one before. Now for the third type, quasi-permanent values. Same as before except for the middle term is gone, except that the middle term is gone, and i starts from 1 instead of 2. This means all the variable loads have to be factored by psi 2. The design load for this is definitely the smallest among the three. This concludes our topic for this video. In the next video, we are going to look into the analysis of section. That's all for now. Goodbye.